Good morning, everybody. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I am back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to take a look at and enjoy watching. Of course, uh, I'm going to be discussing how this particular artwork was created and all my trials and tribulations that I went through when I was creating this piece. Wow, I made it sound like. <laughs> Like this was a very strenuous work. It really wasn't. It was just a simple speed paint. But anyways, um, so yeah, for this particular artwork, of course, I got my idea from the Daily Speed Paint group in Facebook. Um, I'm an avid member of that particular group, and every day we get four prompts to choose from to do a simple 30 minute speed paint slash sketch. It's a great warm up for my day. Uh, I typically do this on a regular basis, you know, just to kind of refresh my art muscles. Uh, if I'm getting a little too worn out from working on one of my longer pieces, then hey, I take a little break and head on over to Daily Speed Paint Group just so that I could get inspired and find a really cool inspiration to draw which in this case the prompt that I chose for this particular day is UFO approaching which is kind of funny that I am publishing this particular video now because of all the brouhaha that is going on with American government releasing the UFO classified material and whatnot so uh, yeah I haven't really been keeping track of the news, so I don't really know what's up with that. I don't even know if the report has been released yet. But I do know that that report is supposed to be released at some point in time, sometime around the time I post this video. Maybe it would have been released already. I'm not sure. Either way, it's very interesting how that happened. But anyways, I did this particular artwork way back last year. As you can see, it, I did this in November of last year, 11-28. I always put the dates on my file names just for um, organizational purposes because really, if you put the date um, in front of your file name, especially the year, it just, everything is just organized. Your artwork is just organized by when you created it so <laughs> it's always a good reference for me especially so then i could refer back to an older artwork and know that it is it is definitely an older artwork just based on the year on the file name so but anyways creta is really cool because it uh gives you the title of the piece in the title bar uh so yeah it's really cool that it says it right there, 1128. Anyways, uh, going on, going back to the to our video that we're supposed to be watching and discussing. Right now, I have started a sketch uh, of a girl and her favorite pet, this wonderful uh, dog. I'm not sure what breed that is. It's obviously kind of hard to tell just because, you know... <laughs> his back is towards us or her back is towards us um but yeah it's a girl and her favorite pet and they are just ready to meet this ufo you know um i'm not really sure what the narrative is in this particular illustration you know when i saw the prompt for that particular day, I kind of just saw the image in my head, you know, a very E.T. kind of moment um, going on where this little girl is obviously not afraid of this very foreign object approaching her. So maybe it's not foreign for her. Maybe it is her friends, just like the way it is in E.T. where, you know, the little kid is friends with the alien what not i'm not sure <laughs> i really don't know what the narrative is point is is when i saw the prompt i saw this image in my head and i knew i just have to do it and so i did and um i really love the piece um especially since when i saw it in my head i knew that what i was gonna go for was very very simple in terms of painting I mean, you saw the final piece. The final piece is just pretty much driven by silhouettes. I mean, the whole thing is just silhouettes. It's pretty much a Mike Magnola 
painting. <laughs> so, I mean, no joking. And oh, wow, this is kind of interesting that I just saw this. Um, I always miss these little things. I, I always preview my video in a faster speed before actually rewatching it again. And of course, when I'm editing it, I'm like seeing bits and pieces of it. But I always just, you know, do it really fast. I So there's some parts that I always miss. And this is the part that I miss when I was previewing it, previewing it at first. I did not realize that I used the gradient tool to initially create the background. So that's really cool. That's really interesting. I thought I just painted it straight black, but apparently I did not. I started it out with a gradient. Uh, and then eventually I am going to end up just doing a marquee selection if I'm not wrong is what I did. And then just simply started blocking out just a simple color shape. But anyways, going back to the whole Mike Mignola, Mignola thing, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Mike Mignola is the artist and the creator of uh, Hellboy. And if you read his comic books or if you look at his comic books, it's immensely, immensely simple. Uh, very, very um, shape driven and predominantly like a few colors uh, maybe like three or four colors predominantly like it's it's not very I mean it's colorful but it's not like it doesn't have a lot of colors and it does it definitely does not have a lot of blending um, so I mean just from what I'm remembering from his from his particular artwork but I definitely knew that he was very very silhouette driven um, and this is what this piece is, uh, you know, the characters are just this reddish silhouette and then like the whole of the background is just straight up black. If it weren't for the light that I put or for the night sky, because the night sky is like a lighter blue. Um, if it weren't for that, creating a silhouette of the UFO and the background environment and whatnot, um, it would have just been straight up black um but yeah i just i just love the color scheme because it's just really really simple which is kind of funny because there's all these colors that i'm laying down right now but all of this would just get all blurred into like one predominant color oh wow that's really interesting how i did that I didn't realize that I actually made the shape of the UFO. Anyways, so what I'm using right now is a random, the random mech brush that comes standard with Krita. And I set a hue variation on it. And the whole point of me doing that is so that I could get all these random shapes, random colors down on canvas. Um, just so that it's not just barren, you know, one color or one simple uh hue i just want to vary up the colors basically i mean that's my whole point in doing all this and then as soon as i lay down all the colors what i typically do is i go back with the blending texture brush just to kind of blend them all in uh kind of unify some of the colors and as soon as all the colors are unified it's easy to see that you know it's predominantly like one cube, but there's enough variation in it to not make it so boring. This is part of the reason why I do this whole thing, where I just lay down a bunch of crazy colors and then smudge them all together as if they were pastels. I mean, this is pretty much how I started with my artwork. Um, I use pastels and that's how I learned how to like blend colors and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, when I do the smudge smudge technique, it all kind of just ends up looking like a really fuzzy pastel artwork. And then I end up detailing on top of that, which my detailing process is just really simple. I delineate my edges, make my edges sharper. Uh, I accentuate the shadows if the shadows need a little darkening and I add highlights. So that's what I'm eventually going to do after I do all this textured action, which is what I'm about to start with.
perfect. It is absolutely mesmerizing watching me do all this marquee selection. I 
I mean, I knew that I did a marquee selection, but I didn't realize I went through all the trouble of marquee selecting the lights as well. But to quickly explain why I did that, I basically wanted to isolate those areas, and I also didn't re didn't realize I did an extra color dodge layer. It's so cool watching this again because I forget all the steps that I would do. Because I change, I switch up the steps every now and then, and so it's not, you know, the same for the most part. But yeah, I guess I, I didn't keep that extra dodge layer. Uh, so I guess I was thinking of doing an extra dodge layer, but then I decided against it, so I deleted it. Or I kept it there, actually, it's right there, paint layer one. But I don't think I ended up using it for anything else, so. Uh, yeah, but anyways, I got done with smudging going back through all the process because you know I took a break from talking just so that I could watch with you guys, right? Um, so what happened was I started doing the smudge I ended up finishing with the smudging technique and then as soon as I finished with all the smudging um, I Basically started doing the marquee selection. Oh and another thing about the smudging thing is that I make sure that I keep within my lines when I'm doing the smudge I don't ne necessarily want to destroy all the details Basically, all I'm trying to do is just blend some colors in a uh, Good example of what I'm trying to do is the ground as of the moment, right? The mo the ground that we're looking at has some yellows has some greens has some dark greens in it and even some browns if i had just done a plain color it without the hue variation from the random mech brush um then it would have been boring because it would have just been like one color instead of like the random mech brush with the hue variation adding some extra different colors in there and that's part of the reason why i have that hue variation um just so that there's uh, a little bit of variety and just it's, it's just so that it's not so boring um, obviously I still had to smudge things around just so that it would harmonize all the colors together but I obviously don't want to make it get to the point where it's just like one plain color because that's really boring in art so yeah but Anyways, yeah, so going back with the process, after I finish um, doing the marquee selection, I obviously ended up reversing it, um, which we have a marquee selection right now. Uh, so I ended up marquee selecting the lights and the characters because I knew that I was going to work on the lights. Um, and then as soon as I have... Um, those selection selected, I ended up reversing the marquee selection so I could work in the background. So in the background, it's pretty much, I, I quickly worked on the background sky. Um, so obviously now it's really, obvious, this, uh, it's really obvious that there's some UFO object that's about to land. And then farther back in it is like some trees or something. And of course, there's the night sky. So... Um, it's a lot more obvious. Obviously, I'm heavily, heavily relying on the silhouette of the UFO just to kind of indicate that there is something there. And it works really effectively. Again, this is like the whole Mike Mignola like style of artwork where you rely on very, very simple shapes to kind of... Uh, to kind of portray what it is that you wanted to portray. Um, without having to go in through a whole lot of detail uh, and a whole lot of painting. So yeah, silhouettes work really well, especially when you're speed painting. I see a lot of the speed painters in the daily speed paint group use this very, very effectively, even more effectively than I did with this particular painting. I mean, I don't really do silhouette painting all the time. I mean, this is one of the rare ones that I did. Um, but yeah, uh, if you check out the group, there's a lot of great people out there who use this technique to to <laughs> really create success, like better than I can. I had such trouble with this. I, I was really, really afraid of doing this particular part 
of the illustration, which is the grass grass blowing. Uh, I knew I wanted to indicate some form of motion in the painting. And typically when something lands like a helicopter or like a jet engine or something that's, you know, about to land, typically they blow a lot of air. And so, you know, I kind of assume the UFO might do that even though <laughs> we can't really assume anything with UFOs just because, you know, for all we know, the alien could have technology where they don't blow crazy amounts of air. I mean, I don't know. But anyways... It's still a good indication of something approaching, you know. And so I knew that I wanted to paint some grasses like all flying in the wind and blowing. And I was like really, really scared of doing it because I thought it was going to be a long and tedious process. I'm like sitting there racking my brains like how fast can I do this in a 30 minute time frame, which I forgot to mention. The Daily Speed Paint Group has a 30 minute time limit to your artwork. That's all you can have to do your artwork. So you got to, you know, really be smart about what you're doing. But yeah, I mean, I knew that I wanted the grass grasses blowing, but I'm just sitting there, you know, like while I was working on it. I'm like, oh man, this is going to take forever. <laughs> I hope I finish this in time. And so I was like carefully paying attention to the time uh, when I was working on it. I was like, okay, I just got to spend like four or five minutes on it. So... But the good thing about artwork, though, is that you don't really have to go through a whole lot of detail. You just have to kind of, you know, add parts of the detail um, just to kind of indicate something. And that works a lot more effectively, actually, versus detailing the whole thing. I mean, like a good example of that would be, you know, just drawing a few bricks on the brick house is actually better looking than if you were to actually draw each and every single brick. Um, it's a lot better looking if it's stylized that way. Obviously, it just really depends on the art situation, you know. I mean, if someone's trying to go for photorealism, um, then yeah, painting each and every single brick, even though it would be very tedious, um, would work. Obviously, especially if you're going for for hyper realism, but for regular old realism, I mean, you can get away with just a few hints of detail, which is what I did with this grass right now. You know, and there's just a few hints of them like blowing in the wind, and obviously, it's obvious enough um, that like a force is pushing on them, uh, and obviously, that force is coming from the UFO. So yeah. But right now, I'm messing around with the lights. And I remember thinking, I spent a lot of time on this lights. I, I seriously did. Uh, I could not decide on what to do with the lights. I knew that I wanted them warm, right? But I also knew that I wanted the green of the ground to connect with the UFO. So it was just kind of like this push and pull in my head. It's like, well, should I go green or should I go with a warm color? You know, like I, I, I could not decide. And so eventually the you can see that the light is kind of like neon greenish, but it's putting out this very warm glow, which is really just what I wanted, uh, like I said. But I couldn't get the right effect. Like I, I just kept messing with it and I wasn't completely happy with it. And to tell you the truth, up until now, I still happy with it you know but I mean it works um, it, it gives off a light effect which is yeah really all I could ask for so yeah but yeah I did a lot of light tweaks I mean obviously you can tell right now I'm like doing a lot of adjustments and hue adjustments and yeah I was just all over the map on this one and in the end, I think I just hand painted it in and I think I did a blur. So yeah, 
so that little experiment I just did is obviously was a no-go. I wasn't happy with the result on it. So I ended up just hand painting this white in. And if I'm not wrong, I did blur. Yep, there it is. Gaussian blur. And that kind of added to the green. Ended up making it look a little yellowish, greenish color. And then if I'm not wrong, I am started working on the girl. Which is really, really late <laughs> in the game. At 27 minutes in, I should have been working on the characters, honestly, around 22 minutes. Just to give myself 8 minutes of time to work on it. Um, but yeah, at this point in time, 28 minutes, I was like, wow. And I, I think at this point in time, I was just so into my artwork that I didn't realize what the time was. But yeah, I knew that I was really low on time. So at this point, I basically just started depending on the silhouette. Like I knew that I wasn't going to detail them. That I was just going to just flat out recreate the shape of the girl and the dog. And so yeah. But yeah, I really, really like this painting. I really, really like the girl's attitude. And again, like I mentioned, I'm not really sure what the narrative was. I just saw the image in my head, and this was the image in my head. And so whether or not this girl is like friends with the aliens that's about to arrive, or whether she's just like, oh yeah, I'm just going to meet them or whatnot. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the story is. Uh, I mean, this totally feels more like an et rather than a horror story so yeah but that's the fun of it you know like i really draw i really love drawing narrative images and not knowing what the narrative is because that's part of the mystery i'm like what's exactly is going on i don't know but yeah but yeah this painting is almost done it's almost complete um, all I'm pretty much doing right now is just adding some highlights like I mentioned you know I delineate my edges make my edges sharper which is what I did you know I'm, I'm making things clearer readable there's a little girl she's not as fuzzy looking anymore and there's a dog with her and of course I'm adding highlights on the dog so yeah and the dog's looking pretty confident too so yeah maybe this UFO is a friend of this little girl and her pet. So yeah. And I just love how simple they are. They're just straight out silhouette. With some colors mixed in all in there. But yeah, very simple and effective speed paint. All just based on silhouettes. Characters are silhouette and the UFO is a silhouette. And really the only thing that's blended and really painted is just the ground for the most part. So everything else is just very, very simple. Immensely effective. Okay, I totally forgot what that whole marquee selection was for. Ah. I was doing a perspective correction because it looked like the girl was tilted too wrong. All right, all right, that makes sense, okay, yeah. I got it, that's what that was. And then real quick fix overall. And then of course accentuating the shadows, adding some shadows because yeah. And then, yep, that should be it for the most part. Oh yeah, I, I needed to fix her arm too, because that arm just looks a little wonky. And yeah, those lights, man, I was just never happy with those lights. I think I really wanted them brighter or something, but I just, I couldn't get them bright enough without getting too distorted I guess or without killing off the green maybe that's what my thought process was I'm not quite sure it's been such a long time ago so yeah I 
And that is it. That is the end of my painting process. Thank you guys for watching it with me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.